Welcome back to the road to City Hall. Until the current round of redistricting, City Council District 8 included part of the Upper West Side. Although the boundaries have changed, the heart of the district is El Barrio, East Harlem. That area is seeing a big surge of development due in part to the construction of the Second Avenue subway. Melissa Mark Viverito represents the district and is hoping to be chosen by her colleagues as the next speaker of the City Council. Viverito took Errol Lewis on a tour of the district and here's what he found. Councilwoman, good to see you. Great, Errol. Well, welcome to the El Barrio East Harlem part of my district here in District 8. Very glad to be here. We're, we are on 1st uh, Avenue around 112th, 113th Street, and I see a bike lane under construction here. Yes, we have bike lanes uh, con continuing from 96th Street all the way up to 125th on 1st, and the same on 2nd Avenue going down. Eventually, will bike share come up this far, do you think? I would hope so, because when you think about a cost-saving measure of providing transportation, that could be used as a commuter option when you're talking about $100 membership for a year it would save a lot of money for constituents that are having a harder and harder time keeping up with these fare increases so we are here at um, jefferson park this is uh, first avenue 112th street a gigantic robert moses type pool i never knew this was here i go by here all of the time what's going on here well, it's a hidden treasure and obviously as council members we can always talk about the big wonderful projects that we do like fixing our parks but sometimes it's the little things that make the quality of life much better for our seniors we have officially kicked off uh, senior pool hours here in East Harlem and El Barrio, and it's very, very wonderful. This is now being modeled citywide. We are here at the old PS109. It looks like it's uh, completely under reconstruction. Melissa has been talking about this. The councilwoman has been talking about this literally as if it was her child. Uh, very excited and wanted to tell me all about it. Tell us what this project is going to be when you're done with it. Art Space Projects and El Barrio's Operation Fight Back has been working for almost a decade now uh, with Melissa, Councilmember Viverito's uh, leadership on turning this former public school, uh, which was decommissioned in the mid-90s, into a home for artists, their families, and arts organizations here in the community. We'll have 90 units of affordable un uh, space for the artists and their families, and an additional 10 to 15,000 square feet of non-residential space. This is a kind of win-win-win because it's economic development also. You know, we have the affordable housing. We're providing community space. So it's really multiple benefits here. Uh, and we're also saving a beautiful building. And so, Councilwoman, this was, the, the building was uh, empty. This, the city walked away from it. It had some structural problems. It was empty for about a dozen years. What made you decide that this was uh, the right way to go? Well, we wanted it to be a community use. And obviously, what greater community use? Obviously, education and space for education is important. But if the city wasn't going to invest to upgrade this building back for classroom space, what better thing than creating affordable and truly affordable housing uh, for artists who live within our community? So we are here in the uh, Washington Houses. This is a, uh, an important site. The Union Settlement is based here, and they've been around for over 100 years. And they've d done a lot of community work here as a settlement house. But this is also a place where they are talking about what they call infill, putting it up for development, kicking out a lot of people, I guess residential and community space, yeah. nonprofit space. Yeah. Crystal Glover, you are the head of the Tenants Association. How do you all feel about that? We don't need infill here. We need our senior programs, our youth programs. We need our apartments fixed. This is the, these are the things we need. We don't need an RFP for an infill program here. And, and David Nocenti, I mean, Union Settlement's been around since the 1890s. I know Cyrus Vance, the original Cyrus Vance Sr., was on your board. A lot of um, major movers and shakers. There's a big credit union here. What will happen if they put this up for development? Where would you guys go? Well, there is no place to go, and that's the problem. I mean, this building here, we serve about 2,000 youth every year, from five-year-olds, the kids you've seen behind us, to 24-year-olds trying to get kids into college or disconnected youth back engaged in the workforce. And there's a senior center here, our college readiness program. This is really the situs of a lot of the work that we do. It's also used by the community, by the tenants associations and others. And that's the problem. There really is nowhere for this place to go. And so you really cannot just decide to take this down and leave all the children and the parents without services. You've got a bunch of public housing in your district. Why do you think they selected this site? Well, I mean, look at it. We're right here on 98th Street between 2nd Avenue and 1st Avenue. You've got the 2nd Avenue subway coming. We all know that, you know, Manhattan becomes prime real estate wherever you are. And this idea that everything is for sale uh, is not acceptable to us. We have longstanding members of our community that are here. We have a right to live in our community. We have a right to remain in our community. So this is 96th Street and 1st Avenue. And lots of people talk about cooperative and sort of uh, career and technical education. 
this is pretty much the place where it all gets done. Exactly. This is a, a great school that's been around, obviously, for a long time. And this is a site that the city, again, they have some sort of fire sale going on in East Harlem, it looks like, uh, wants to put this up to the highest bidder, wants to tear this building down, relocate the school, build luxury housing right here on 96th Street and 1st Avenue, and then possibly bring the school back. We are here in the South Bronx at the Millbrook Houses. This has been in your district for a while. And um, you, did, you do the participatory uh, budgeting and this complex is going to get quite a lot of money. Yes. Your constituents have voted for that. Very exciting. We've done a lot of work with Millbrook Houses. It is one of the key public housing developments in this Bronx portion of my district. And so it's, it's, got, it's one project through the participatory budget, and we've been doing it now two years. I'm very proud, one of the founding pioneer members of that process. Uh, so they've got playground upgrades that were voted on, uh, some security camera installations, and this year, very exciting, a solar-powered greenhouse that was voted on and won, which we're going to be bringing into the public housing development. Okay, Priscilla Jamison, very nice to meet you. You are the head of the Tenants Association here. Yes. And uh, what are the priorities here? She's listed a lot of different things that the city council is trying to do here. One of the um, main priorities that we had, they was trying to close down our community center, and Melissa helped save it. And also, we was having problems getting our sidewalks fixed for over five years. And Melissa was able to rectify that by getting it fixed. Okay, we are here on 125th Street between Parks and Lexington Avenue. This is one of the many firehouses that actually did get closed. And I know that was a big fight, but you're trying to turn it into something new. Right, so last time we had firehouse closings was about close to 10 years ago. Five in the city of New York got closed. This was one of them. Sat vacant for several years. I became an elected official and I negotiated with the city to take the, this one off the auction block. The all five were going to be privately sold to the highest bidder, and we fought to have this become a cultural organization and a community, go to a community organization. And thankfully, based on that advocacy, all five firehouses actually were taken off the private auction block. What's going to go on in here? There'll be space for exhibitions, there'll be a gift shop, there'll be a cafe, a multi-purpose room, which will be available to community members as well as other not-for-profit partners with whom we've collaborated and hope to collaborate with moving into the future, exhibition space, offices. It's going to be a place that really reflects the culture of the community we're in. So you're, you're talking about a lot of different things by the city um, and private developers. It seems like uh, East Harlem is very much in play. Is that going to be part of the focus of your next four years if you get reelected? It will continue to be. I mean, I think what I wanted to show was really some of the challenges and some of the the, 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 you know, thrills that we have in this community about the work that we do, but it is still a, a community in flux. Uh, there's a lot that has to be preserved and that we have to organize. And this is not a job that I can do alone as an elected official. It's a collaborative effort with my constituents to really work hand in hand um, to preserve what we have, to bring in needed resources, to uh, continue to be respected as a community, that we're here to, to that we are here and longstanding members of the community. So there's a lot to celebrate. Uh, but there's a lot of work still ahead, and I think that uh, hopefully that's what I've been able to show you here today. Okay, well, thanks for showing us around. Well, gracias. Welcome to El Barrio in East Harlem and District 8, and thank you very much for being here today. Okay. And we'd like to thank Councilwoman Viverito and her staff for arranging this week's tour. It's time for a break. Coming up, the four members of our Reporters Roundtable will tell us what impact they think the...